when you do a Google search for what is NAV, the first answer that will come to you is NAV is equal to assets minus liability and then your accounting and finance mind gets triggered and it says how is that possible because for you assets is supposed to equal liabilities and that's how the balance sheet balances but if the assets equals liabilities and then you go on to calculate NAV as assets minus liabilities, you're going to come up with a big fat zero, right? So then how NAV is equal to assets minus liabilities? Don't think like that. That's where you have to start using your finance brain and your logical brain rather than just thinking about what Google is going to give you as an answer. Hello everybody, I'm your learning partner Sushila Hari Haran. If you're interested in a career in investment banking, trade life cycle and hedge funds, do subscribe to my YouTube channel where we provide content-centric videos, research-focused videos that bring clarity and simplicity to many of the concepts that might seem confusing initially to you. So let's understand this. Every mutual fund, a fund which pools money from different investors, is then invested into different asset classes across different currencies, across different uh, economies, depending upon the investment objective of the fund. So the investor, when they invest money into the mutual fund, they are allotted what is called as units into the fund. Okay, The unit is representing the the numerical valuation or the quantification of the numerical valuation of the units that they have. Then how do we know what is the value of those units? For this we need to know two separate things and two very distinct things and for that we need to understand what is the life cycle of the NAV or the net asset value. At the time of launching a fund, every fund collects capital from investors at a NAV of 10 rupees in India. In some countries it's a dollar, in some countries it's a euro, in some countries it is even less than that. Okay, So that they allow for small and retail investors to participate extensively in these asset classes. So the second point that comes to our mind is at the time of launching the fund, when the fund is open to public subscription for the very first time, as a mandatory rule, all units are allotted at a nominal value of or at a NAV of 10 rupees. Okay, So if you have given 100,000 rupees into the fund, you will be allotted 100,000 divided by 10, that's 10,000 units of the fund. That is the investment value at which you are investing into the fund. The NAV represents at that point of time just the capital contribution because remember the capital is still not invested. Once the capital is invested into different asset classes, for example a growth fund would invest in equities, a bond fund would invest extensively in uh, bonds, an income fund would also be investing in bonds, a liquid fund would be investing in money market instruments etc. The value of that total capital that is contributed by the investors is called as AUM or assets under management. So remember these two distinct things. Assets under management is the capital contributed by the investors into the fund. Second, the value at which it is contributed is the NAV. Okay? Don't think of NAV as assets minus liabilities, you'll always get zero because your mind thinks assets is equal to liabilities, therefore assets minus liabilities is equal to zero. So how to answer this question when it is asked at an interview, what is NAV? NAV is the value of the assets under management divided by the number of units, okay? make this very clear because the funds are making it very clear. They don't have any confusion in their mind that assets minus liabilities is obviously equal to zero because assets is equal to liabilities, right? That's why the balance sheet balances. So over here, have a different approach, have a tangential approach, have a fresh approach when you want to answer the question, what is NAV? Start from what is the assets under management, definition one. Assets under management is the total capital contributed by the investors. 
does it include fixed assets certainly not how can it include fixed assets because investors are not contributing into the fund to buy land and building plant and machinery furniture and fixtures so you have to exclude that so there are many points which have to be considered while considering assets under management because assets under management represents capital contribution from investors into the fund after reading the offer document the investment objective who is a fund manager etc step 1 is identifying assets under management step 2 very important step is finding out how many units are allotted in the case of an open ended fund both of these change in the case of corporate actions like stock splits or dividend payments etc they will change what will change assets under management will change so we have to identify the corporate action associated with the assets under management and third is the number of units that are allotted to the investor changes only at the end of the day because of the nature of the fund right so therefore don't say nav is net asset value that is assets minus liabilities say it is the unit valuation of the assets under management so now when you think of it this way when you think of it in this fresh dramatic way you now are clear in your mind that we are now segregating investor capital versus investor units vis-a-vis -vis total capital because assets under management is not equal to the total assets it's a part of the uh, total assets of the fund it is not equal to the total assets of the fund the fund will have other assets including uh, you know furniture and land and building and laptops lying around and stuff like that right office space also they may have purchased it so then they will have so assets under management is a part of the total assets and that is divided by the number of units allotted you get the nav and that in my mind is a far better way to analyze how nav is explained at the time of an interview rather than just saying assets minus liabilities is equal to nav and the interviewer next you literally open the flood gate to the interviewer and he's going to say oh so that's equal to zero because assets minus liabilities is equal to zero so if you were to play have fun and ask him and answer that way uh, then go ahead and do so but in my mind that is not going to take you to the next level of the interviews because you need to know how to approach the concept of assets under management versus number of units so that you are then able to find out what is the unit value of every single unit of the fund thank you so much for listening in